What's up, Tubesters? It's the Moth here. Today, we're going to talk about changing the oil on your car. This particular car is a 2003 Lexus ES330. This would be a very simple job, as it is on most cars. Um, this particular car has the 3.3. Really good motor. And uh, before you start this job, uh, the tools you need is a ratchet and the socket i believe on this one is a 12 millimeter we'll double check that when i get under the car and you also might need a filter wrench to get your oil filter off and it's quite important to uh double check what the oil capacity is on your car you do not want to overfill your oil because there is all kinds of issues that you can run into so please make sure that you do have your oil capacity correct and also the tools oh well i told you about the tools you need but you'll also need the oil of course and the filter this particular car takes 5w30 and the filter it takes is 51 348 so we'll get started and i'll show you how to jack up a car all right so now we're at the fun part of the job and it's time to take the nut off so we can drain the oil into this pan here. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna be careful. Uh, the hardest part is once you got the nut just about off, you wanna catch it so you don't get it all dirty and messy with the oil draining in here. So it'll take some time to get the skill down, but once you do it a few times, it's nothing. And what I like to do when I'm just about there, and see my motor is cool, so it's a lot more simple that way when you have a cool motor. But I see the oil starting to drip out a little bit, so it's going to spew out forward a little bit. So make sure you got your pan positioned right. And also you want to make sure that you have a towel handy because this is going to get messy. Here we go. There we go. Give that a couple of minutes to drain out. we'll be right back all right and we're back now the benefit of changing your own oil is you can actually inspect the oil when it comes out to make sure you know there's no contaminants shaved metals and stuff like that in your oil and also when we empty the oil out of this this was completely empty before i let the oil drain into it so there was no pre-existing oil in here but when we pour it back into the uh the uh, container that the oil came in, we're going to inspect and see how many quartz fills up because that'll let you know if your car is burning oil or if you have an oil leak. So we'll check that out here in a minute. I'm gonna put this cap back on or this nut. And it's important to put this on snug. You don't want to over tighten this. You could ruin your oil pan. So once you got it on, I'm going to take the ratchet and like I said you just want it snug you don't want it too tight that's about good right there and you also just want to wipe off any excess oil around the nut and the next thing we're going to do is take off the filter and the filter is right under here so I think it's easier if we reach it from the bottom you can also reach from the top, but it's a little easier from the bottom, especially with that motor being cool. All right, bear with me, because I'm doing this job all by myself, and I'm trying to focus this camera in on this uh, oil wrench that I have right here with the actual filter. And you just want to make sure you get that loose. Sometimes these filters can be in tight spots, and that makes the job hard, but... Like I said, once you do it a couple of times, it's not so bad. All right, so I finally got this thing loosened up. I'm about to uh, do the rest with my hand and make sure that you do have your oil pan in position because there's going to be some oil that's going to leak out as you loosen this, especially as you get it all the way off. You're going to have to quickly Turn it upside down so most of the oil can stay in the actual can. As you see, it's starting to leak out now. 
believe it or not, positioning this pan becomes a skill too. Sometimes you can miss it and get oil all over the concrete or your garage and everyone knows that's a headache to clean up. Just about got it. Wanna quickly turn it upside down so I can catch most of this oil in the pan. There we go. And then just let the rest fall in there. I like to leave it upside down, let it drain itself. And you can take a towel and wipe off the oil that you spilt on your frame. Once I put the new oil filter on, I'll clean it a little bit more because there's still something dripping off. So we'll take care of One thing I like to do is to lubricate this seal with some of the oil that I have sitting in here just makes it a lot easier to take off next time so you know work smarter not harder right so I got some on there now we're gonna get it back up there see that there you go I'm gonna spin it until I catch the threads which got pretty lucky first try want to get it as tight as I can with my hand and this is another thing you want you don't want to tighten too much but you want to have it snug just as well as that nut for the oil pan there you go then take my oil wrench and tighten it just a little bit more sometimes these things can be a headache to get in place they got fancier ones I think this is a, it's a cheaper version there we go gotta find the right position and that's that so before you leave from under the car want to like I said get the rest of that oil off that you dripped I'm changing that oil filter you don't want to wake up in the morning and you got oil dripping all over your concrete and you're like whoa did I leave something loose and speaking of that make sure you do have your nut tight and just double check your filter is tight and now we can fill the oil all right now it's time to fill the oil and like i said you want to double check to see what the oil capacity is on your car on this particular car it's going to be five quarts and it's always easier to use one of these long funnels it makes the job so much more simple and we're just going to pour this oil in here until we uh use all five quarts and once we're done we'll crank the motor up double check the dipstick to make sure that we're full and next we'll talk about resetting the oil light on your car all right so we have emptied the five quart jug into the motor and very important to make sure that you do put your oil cap back on if you don't do that and you drive off without this, you could possibly blow your motor or cause some other issues. So make sure that's back going nice and tight. And while I'm at it, I can show you how to reset your maintenance light or your oil light on this particular car. What I'm going to do is hold down this pin right here while I turn this key to the on mode. Not start, but on. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me get that camera to focus. There you go. So while I hold that down, I'm going to turn it to on mode. Make sure you guys can see this. Let me get this camera positioned. So while I have that down, you see these lines leaking. And once they clear, 
I know I have it reset. So now when I crank my motor, there's usually a maintenance light that lights up right here. Should be gone by the time I crank it up. And it is gone. So now we have the maintenance light reset. We have some fresh oil in the motor. I'm gonna let this car run for a little minute. Give it a little rev. And it's important to do this because as you rev your motor and let it idle for a little bit, you know, the oil is working itself on the components inside the motor. So whenever you turn off the motor and go check your oil stick, that's why you got to have the car off because all the oil has settled back down to the bottom and your reading is going to be more accurate. You know, with the transmission, it's a little different. You have to check your uh, dipstick while the car is running to get an accurate reading on your transmission so and I think that's good enough we'll go ahead and turn it off come over to the dipstick and when you first pull it out the readings not going to be accurate just go ahead and dry it off Want to stick it back in there and this time this should be a more accurate reading and both of those dots sorry both of those dots are filled up and that's what we want some uh, dipsticks might actually say full or half but with this one you look at the actual dots to make sure both are filled up with oil Stick it back in there. Make sure you get all your tools cleaned up and organized. Make sure there's no oil spilling on the ground. Make sure you have everything back in place and you have officially changed your oil. All right, so like I said, the benefit of changing your own oil is you get to inspect it. So this is the oil that came out of the motor. And as I'm pouring it back into this jug, I'm looking for any kind of metal shavings or any kind of foreign objects that might be coming out of the motor. That'll give me an idea of what I need to monitor later on. And once you have it all back in there, you can read on the jug how much oil went back in. So not bad, that jug is almost full. So this car is doing pretty, doing pretty good. It's not really burning any oil or anything like that. So that lets me know my motor is holding on well. So that's an official job when changing your oil. Thanks.